So it's a blessing to be with you. We're in an amazing um, series, right? What's the name of our series? The GOAT, the greatest of all times. Jesus is the greatest of all times. Um, today, I wanna share with you though, just for the next few minutes, and my title is The Audacity of Jesus. Um, and uh, at, the, at the end of The Audacity of Jesus, I want you to get some audacity before you leave here. If he's your father, you should act like him. If he's your father, you should act like him. I told someone earlier this week, I said, Jesus had a big head and you should have a big head too. That's Southern vernacular. He felt good about himself. He walked around feeling good about himself. He did stuff that was impossible by himself without other people believing in him. Uh, that was his that was his persona. So go ahead. I'm going to do something first so that I can save my time. I'm going to give you homework for Wednesday night. Homework. I'm a teacher. So I'm going to give you some homework for Wednesday night. This is your homework. For Wednesday night, I want you to read all these scriptures. Read all these scriptures before you come on Wednesday night. If you don't plan to come on Wednesday night, make plans to come. Be in the room or on the Zoom. But I think it's YouTube instead. So if you can't be here, you're at work. Take an hour or so, go to the closet, take your lunch. And, uh, but I want you to read these scriptures beforehand. So that, and I think I'm teaching Wednesday night. I took for granted. Um, so I'm going to be teaching you, and I'm going to be teaching you on Wednesday night how to live an audacious life. How to live an audacious life. It's how we live in the kingdom he's provided for us. Amen? So you got those scriptures? You have them? You're writing them down? Okay, good. I want you to read them now. It, it might be a little bit more reading than you're used to doing uh, during your week, but you can, get, you can get this done in about 30 minutes. Write down your notes and your questions concerning these scriptures because the idea is we need to live just like we live in here worshiping with audacity on our face, on our knees. We should take that same presence when we go to school, when we do business, as we're raising our children, we're, as we're coding on a computer, as we're healing people in the hospital. This is the life we're supposed to live every day, everywhere we go. Everywhere we go. Everywhere we go. You're, you're in a hospital, you're in a classroom, you're at a parking lot, you're at a, you're, you know, wherever you work. It should feel like this. It should feel like you're in the presence of God. It should feel like God's with you. It should feel like for you that you're in a power moment. Do you know you're more powerful doing what you're called to do than sitting in that purple chair? That's when the anointing should hit you. Like PJ, when he's up here, because he's doing what he does, the anointing hits him. Well, when you're a mechanic and you're, you're changing the oil, you should feel something changing the oil. You should feel something writing someone's marketing plan. You should feel something while you're writing prescriptions. You should feel something while you're cutting someone's hair. You should feel something when you're doing accounting for a client. You should feel something when you're giving counseling because that's your anointing. And the idea behind Jesus is that you become the greatest. He made you the champion in the story. And that's how we should live. Am I making sense? Good. So now say with me the audacity of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, do you have audacity? Ask him, do you have audacity? Do you have audacity? Would you do something even though people don't think you can? Do you speak well of yourself in periods of time? Go to Matthew 6. I know I put this in your reading, but I'm just going to uh, top it over. I'm just going to go over the top of it just for a second. Matthew 6, 31 through 34. It says, therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Read it with me. What shall we eat and what shall we drink or what shall we wear? Why? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. Keep reading. For your heavenly father, what? He knows that you need all these things. So next verse. So don't worry. Read the next one. But seek ye first. 
the kingdom of God and come on. So listen to what he says. He says, listen, listen now, and, and I'm going to have you read this this week because Wednesday night we're going to break this scripture down. And you're going to see so much power into your life because you understand what Jesus just said here. Jesus, Jesus just said right here, he is saying, listen, don't worry about the things you're going to need. This, this is him talking. He says, don't, that, that's not your job. It's not, your, it's not your job. I didn't send you down here to be worrying about what you're going to eat. I did not send you down here to worry about where you're going to live and what clothes you're going to wear. That's not why. Because if you're worried, if you're worried about what you're going to eat, you're never going to do anything for God. You're never going to be audacious. So you're never going to be bold. And I can't spend a lot of time here. But Jesus says, listen, instead of worrying about food, Instead of worrying about where you're going to live, instead of worrying about clothing, do one thing first. The first thing you need to do is seek the kingdom. I'll explain on Wednesday night. First thing you need to do is seek the kingdom. Why? Because if you can find the kingdom, everything else you're looking for, everything else you need is given to you. But if you never find the kingdom, you'll never have what you need. You can be saved and on your way to heaven, but you don't know the kingdom? You're going to live on earth broke. If you, if you don't find out what the kingdom, and I'm going to show you on Wednesday night what this means, seeking the kingdom. But it's a, it's a whole other thing, and it needs to be a Bible study so it gets in your heart. Yeah, take Wednesday night off if you can. Be in the house of God. If you can't be here, do it on YouTube. So now he says, Instead of worrying, seek the kingdom, right? Do not worry, study the kingdom. What is the kingdom? The kingdom is simply this. There's a longer definition, but I'll give it to you. The kingdom is literally, read it with me. It's, uh, you gotta, gotta straighten that out, right? Is that, is that a word? Okay, what is the kingdom? Okay, let's read it again. What is the kingdom? It's a territory where a sovereign exercises authority. A kingdom is where a king or a queen lives. It's a sovereign where they operate in power over a certain territory. That's what a kingdom is. And God decided that he was the king of heaven and he was going to make man and make them the king of earth. That's it. So tell yourself, when I go to work tomorrow, tell yourself. I said, talk to yourself. You can feel like schizophrenic. That's fine. Tell yourself, when I go to work tomorrow, I'm the king. King doesn't mean male or female. It means sovereign. We don't have to say queen here. Wherever you go, you are the king there. That was the original purpose. Secondly, the original purpose was not for you to get saved and go there. The purpose for you to get saved is to get reconnected to calling and live that out on earth. That's why you're here. Otherwise, y'all heard me say, if God wanted you to just be saved and go to heaven, we would have a 357 or a shotgun here or a lethal injection at the altar. We would help you get saved and then we'd send you home. But that is not why you're here. You're here to get saved and now be restored to calling so that you can go into the world and do what you're assigned to do. Tell your neighbor, I, I can't do your job and mine. I can't, I, can't, I can't build what you can build. I can't teach how you can teach. I can't show people how to become millionaires like you can. Can I get at least 10 amens about that? You know, if you, you can only show someone to be a, how to be a millionaire if you're one. So I'll say this again. I might not be able to teach people how to be millionaires like you can. I'm, where am I at? There's something that God wants to do to you so that he can do it through you. 
Am I making sense? I think I am. So now, here's the scripture I want to talk about for the next few minutes. John 14, 6. There are a lot of things Jesus says he has, says he is. He, Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. I'm the light. I'm the resurrection. I'm the bread of life. I'm the gate of the sheep. I'm the true vine. There are so many things he called himself, but I only want to concentrate on four, on four of them. And they're in this one scripture, John 14, 16. Read it with me. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Read what he says next. No one. Then that takes audacity. Jesus, this is one explicit statement with four laws in it. And you better know it. This is the audacity of Jesus to speak of himself this way. First, he says, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I am the life. The life of what? The kingdom we just read about. He came to bring the kingdom of God to earth, that message. That's why he came. Now he's saying with audacity, I am the way to that kingdom. I am, me, exclusively, not your mama, not your daddy. It's not Catholicism. It's not, it's not whatever denomination you come from. It's me. And if you don't come through me, you will never get there. Tell your neighbor, you're working too hard. So don't go to sleep. He says, I am the way. This is what, this is what he's saying. When he's saying, I am the way, he's making a declaration. And his declaration is that I am unparalleled. I don't have to wait for someone to call me the queen of soul. I don't need to wait for your label on my life. I don't need you to tell me I'm the goat. I know I am. I know I'm the greatest of all times. And I'm going to have the audacity to tell you how. He says, I am the way. What is he saying? What is he saying here? Jesus is proclaiming that he's not merely a guide. He says, I'm not just a guide to the place or a path to the place. I am the place. When you make it to me on this altar, I'm not just here to keep you from, from using drugs or sinning or making mistakes. No, that's not my job. My job is to be the entrance for your life into a bigger and better life. Anybody want that life? So Jesus is saying this. He's saying, I'm the path, the path to your salvation. He says, I am the path to your reconciliation with God. The path. There is no other path. I love going to Vegas. I love going to New Orleans. I do. I love going to Bourbon Street. I do. I like to see the nations of the world. Everybody's on Bourbon Street. I like going to Bourbon Street because I know, especially if I go at one or two in the morning, I'm going to have five sermons on Bourbon Street. I'm going to get a Catholic sermon. I'm going to get a Holy Roller sermon. I'm going to get a, a, a sermon in Spanish. I'm going to get a sermon by the Jesus onlys. Y'all, oh, y'all don't want to, y'all go to Bourbon Street? Y'all too safe for Bourbon Street? If Bourbon Street is, is, is a temptation for you, yeah, you got to get spirit filled. Got to get more than just saved. I'm going to get so many messages and they're all different. Why should I be Catholic? Why should I be a holy roller? Why should I do whatever? I, and they all come to the same place. Because if you're a sinner, you're going to hell. That's what you need over here. And usually, and my wife will say, Martin, don't bite it. Don't take the bait. Just keep walking. Hold my hand and let's finish. We're going to walk down Bourbon Street. We're going to take the right at St. Peter's. Then we're going to Mississippi River. Then we're going to walk the river. Then we're going to come back out to our hotel room. And I said, babe, I just can't. So I'll ask the question, where did Jesus say I'm going to hell? 
Where'd this theology come from? Show me in the Bible where he says you're going to hell. And then describe that word hell, which of the seven definitions is it? They can't. Because the motivation to them is don't screw up. Do you know you can never do anything right if you're afraid of doing it wrong? You get stuck in your own head. Jesus doesn't need you stuck in your own head. If you could be saved on your own, you wouldn't need him. He says, I'm the path. I'm the only way to get there. I'm coming. He says, I am the path to eternal life. I am the only path and the only way to the kingdom. I want to move on. Then he says these words. Well, I'll give you this scripture. John 8, 12, you can put it in your notes. Then Jesus spoke to them and he said to them, I'm the light of the world. He says, I'm the light of the world. Read the last part. He who follows me. So Jesus is saying, if you walk with me on, my, on the path I give you, you won't live in ignorance. That's what darkness is. Okay, you ever had a girlfriend? You liked her? You liked her? She liked a guy. But she didn't know what was happening. He was talking to a lot of other people she didn't know about. Back in the day, we would say, she's in the dark. Y'all don't say that these days. What do y'all say these days? She's getting played. All right, y'all go straight for it. Okay, we would simply say she's in the dark. What does that mean? She doesn't know. In the same way this scripture says, if you follow him, you won't be ignorant. You'll be in the know. You'll know the right things to do. You'll know the right deals that fit you. you know the right people to be around. So you follow Jesus instead of other people. Number two, he says, I am the only truth. I'm sorry. This is so close to arrogance. <laughs> Jesus is saying, I had to study it for you. Jesus is saying, I'm not talking about the truth. I embody it. When you're with me, it's not just the words out of my mouth. I am it. I'm not, ta- I'm not telling you the truth. I am the truth. I'm the only truth you'll ever see. I have, I'm the sole revealer of the ultimate truth. I am it. And when I say it's true, it is true. Y'all saw the, the, the movie, uh, when he, when he said, uh, uh, when was it, uh, what's his name from Mississippi? The actor, Bruce Almighty, Morgan Freeman, Jim Carrey says, God asked him how many how many fingers do you have? Seven. He says, no, nope, five, seven. See, it's, it's, it's this idea that God can make seven fingers show up on a five-finger hand. He doesn't need to ask you anything. Let me bring that to your house. God doesn't have to ask you to be good to you. He doesn't need your permission. You're praying things sometimes to a God that you think fails, that you think you need to coerce, that you think he's waiting on you to do something for you. No. Everything that was ever going to be done for you has been done for you. The difference is when you decide to live in his kingdom. When you're in his kingdom, everything is added to you. You're not looking for anything. You're discovering it. Am I making sense? Here's what he says. He say, I am the truth. And if I am the truth, this is what it means in Hebrew. If I'm the truth, everybody else talking to you is lying. (laughs) I have to decide whether I'm going to say this. Let me, let me tell you how I'm going to say it. Sometimes people, 
And this is the way me and my wife, we woke up the other morning about 4 o'clock just start talking. Sometimes people think, think you're stupid. And, and they believe that because of history, they can take advantage of you. <laughs> and typically, I let them think they can. Can I get one amen from somebody It's okay? But, but God, I'm not going to say that part. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So, but God will help you in moments when people think they're taking advantage of you. And he'll just tell you, hold your peace. Don't say nothing. Let me work for you. Don't say, nothing, don't say nothing about me. Don't say nothing about the Bible. And whatever you do, Martin, keep you cool. Don't pick a fight. Say, I understand. And go on about your business. But when you leave that place, you say these words to God. God, you heard what they said. So now, I'm not going to fight my own battle in this case. I'm going to let you fight my battle. Tell your neighbor, God can win some stuff. He knows how to take things from other people that they think they can take from you. He knows how to bring it to you without you fighting. He knows how to, he's the truth, you're not. Three, three, three. What is number three? He says, I am the life. I am the life. He's literally saying, I'm the source of life. I'm the sustainer of life. I have power over death. I'm the example of life. I want to stop there just for a moment. He says, I'm the example of life. Write this down. However Jesus lived on earth, in the kingdom, that's how you should be living on earth. Whatever he did on earth, you should be doing on earth. Uh-oh, I never heard that theology. Why would he leave and he didn't leave anybody who could be him? What did he do on earth? What did he do? Be specific. What did he do? He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He cast out. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Too much for you? That's the stuff he did. Then he said, greater Greater work shall you do. Why? As I go back to my father, Jesus said, the world is not going to work with one Jesus. I'm going to sit on your lap for a minute. You are Jesus. Give me a verse. As he was in this world, so are you. You are the Jesus everybody's looking for. You're here to heal the sick, heal sick businesses, heal sick systems, heal places where they cast the demons out of that hospital administration. Anybody that get in your Uber, if they get in your Uber it, uh, 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 terrorized by a demon, when they get out, they need to be like, what happened to me? You cannot be in the presence of Jesus and stay sick. You cannot give me a bankrupting business and it not go over the top. You cannot fire me. I do not work for you. I work for... You can't put me in jail if my spirit is free. Tell your neighbor, you're accepting too much. You're accepting too much. That's not the will of God for your life. I 
I got you. I got you 15 minutes. Watch this now. John 10 and 10 says, John 10 and 10 says, read it out loud. What does the thief do? The thief does not come except. Read it over. The thief does not come. Stop. When the devil enters your space, what's he there for? The only reason he steps into your business or into your education or your marriage is to do what? Tell yourself, I know his motive. I know exactly what he wants. This little thing that happened last week, I know what the devil's after. He wants to destroy your relationship with your fiance, your husband, your wife, your job. He wants to interrupt the progress. But Jesus said, listen to me. I want you to understand something. But I came. Because I want you to have Zoe. I want you to have life. I want you to go where you're supposed to go, do what you're supposed to do, come home the way you need to come home and live in peace. That's what I'm here for. And I don't just want you to have it. I want you to have it crazy. I want you to have it till it's embarrassing. I want you to have it till you got to explain yourself. I want you to have it where you can take care of your needs and the people around you. I want you to have it so big that you don't even have to worry about what's going on in your life. I'm not going to mess with you all day. Listen to this now. I came that they may have life. They can have it more abundantly. That's why Jesus is here. Let me move on. But number four. Number four. This one right here. Jesus is getting ready to go nuts. He says, no one. No, nobody. <laughs> can you... Can, can, can you hear him? Y'all can't hear him. Okay. You, put yourself in this situation where you're, you're with Jesus with his disciples. And he's preaching to 5,000 people. And Jesus says, look, uh, I mean, it's so gangster to me. <laughs> if you want to get to the Father, you got to come through this door. You can't, you can't come through any other door. There's nobody else who can help you. There's nobody else that has an open door to him. He says nobody can come to him. In other words, he's saying, I'm, I'm the exclusive mediator. I have a corner on the market. <laughs> Eight billion people on the planet. He's saying... I'm the only way you can get there. I have exclusivity on the market. I have exclusive access to God. I have exclusive power to restore. I have exclusive authority. I also have exclusive, I'm the, I'm the one that prepares you. I'm the only one that can prepare you for your calling. Nobody else knows who you are. Nobody else knows what you're here to do. Talk to me. Nobody else knows your calling, your anointing. Nobody else knows your gifts. Nobody knows you. The people who stand up here don't know you. Your mama don't know you. Your daddy don't know you. But Jesus says, I'm the only one that knows you, why you're here, what you're supposed to do. I know where all your stuff is for your assignment. He's serious about this. And after you do everything in church, this is not your anointing. Unless you're like me or PJ. If you're not anointing for this, if, you, if you're not anoint, if you're not anointed for this, keep your happy booty on the forklift. I'm telling you, don't get up here. The scars I survived. It's only because I was anointed for it. And this is not the only pulpit. You have your own. 
And it's just as important as this. I was telling my daughter-in-law before she got married to Josh, I said, she was talking to me. She says, I'm not a pastor. But I said, how many people come through Children's Hospital? How many babies have you saved from dying? You, most of you don't know what she does. How many babies have you saved from dying? How many parents have you talked to? She's looking at me and she says, thousands. I said, you're a bigger pastor than I am. You're reaching more people at that hospital than we're reaching in the church. That's your pulpit. And God's not going to say Martin gets a better reward than you do. Never idolize this place. Am I making sense? You better tell your neighbor to wake up. Okay, this is the one I wanted to get to. Y'all all right? Okay, I'm finna hit you. In the, I'm, fin, I'm finna hit you now. This, this, this might be. I don't want to. You know, I don't want you to feel. I don't want you to feel like somebody's touching you in a bad way. But I'm finna mess with your religion just a minute. Cause this is the big one. Put it up, Psalms 82. Y'all ready? Now I need y'all to read now for real. Can you read and comprehend? This knocked me out about 15 years ago, and every time I read it, I'm still lost. It's the audacity of Jesus. Watch this now. Read it, read it. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods, little g, little g, little g. You with me? What does he say? How long will you judge and show partiality to the wicked? Selah, think about that. What does he say? Defend and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Keep going with me. Free them. Listen to what he says. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in all the foundations. I dare you to read the next verse. I said, You're going to die just like men and fall like, go back to the other verse because some of y'all stopped reading at the words I thought you'd stop reading at. He said, he's, no, no. He said, tell him, tell him, LJ. What'd he say? What did he say? You are God's and you are I just hit your religion in the face. Because everybody keeps telling you, everybody, read it in your Bible. Everybody keeps telling you, you're not God. You're a lowly worm. You're something God has to save. You're not a child of God. I'm coming to you. Well, that's the Old Testament. Hang on, Lucy. Hang on. I'm coming for you. Because you're working too hard. You don't have to dance to Michael Jackson's music. He did it. Y'all don't understand what I said. Go to YouTube and find out what his rehearsals were like. His rehearsal could be three days without sleep, enjoying himself before you even heard it. You don't need nobody to believe in you. You need to understand. You are gods, and all of you are children of the most high, but... Because you don't know, next verse, because you don't know, you're just going to die like mere men. You're going to die without your stuff. You're going to die without your calling. You're going to die never completing. Listen to me. You're going to die never completing your assignment because you never found it. You're going to go to that Bible now, aren't you? Oh, let me see. Let me go read my other translation to see if it means that. It means God, look it up. It means God and judge. That ain't what tripped me out, though. That, that didn't trip me out. What he's saying there is you are made in his image. You are made in his likeness. You are all the children of God. And now he's saying you're ignorant and you don't know. 
the audacity of Jesus in Psalm 82. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. In Psalm 82 for him to say, I said, (laughs) you are God's. I think you're following me. In Psalm 82, in parentheses and in commas, this is a quote. Let me move on. Let's go to the New Testament. Y'all all right? John 10, this messes me up every time. John 10, 30 through 35. Let's read it. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me see. Let me, let me see. Let me, let me, let me. I need to see. I need to see what's happening in your spirit. Because if you get this, changes your life. He wasn't just the goat. He's the greatest of all times, of all times, of all times, and all times. Let's read it. And my father, hold up. Jesus starts this by saying, me and the father, y'all know this gangster, me and the father are one. You can't separate him from me. And you can't separate me from him. That's bold. That's filled with audacity. Not really. Keep reading. Me and my father are one. Listen to what the Jews did. Read it loud. Then the Jews, they took up stones to stone him. Go back. All he said was, all he said was, all Oh, there I am. (laughs) All he said was, me and my father are the same. So the next words in scripture say what? Then they start picking up rocks. They've been listening to him all day. But when he said that, (laughs) so Jesus has a question. Read his question. His question is, uh, many, many good works I've shown you from my father, proving we're one. Come on, lawyers in the room. Come on, lawyers in the room. Come on, lawyers in the room. Jesus is standing before the judge. He's standing before the seat. He's he's standing in front of the judge now. This is one of those may we approach moments. Because these are the Pharisees and the, the leaders of the Jewish community. These are the lawyers, the keepers of the law. So Jesus says, many good works I have shown you from my father. Now, every man should know why you're killing him. Before you kill him, that's justice, that's legal for you to tell me what am I accused of and now what have you have proven my guilt? So listen to what they say. The Jews answered and said, and said to him what they say, for a good work, we do not stone you. We're not going to stone you because you raised the dead. But for And because you, oh, because you being a man, do what? That's why we finna kill you behind. We're not taking you out because you raised somebody from the dead. We're taking you out because you say you're like God. We gonna kill you. Jesus, man. Listen to what, listen to what your big brother said. Jesus, watch him now. Jesus says, is it, read it, y'all, please. Read it, read it like you're preaching a little bit. I mean, sit up straight. I mean, for real, don't be slumped over. Read, read it like you're getting ready to learn something that's going to change your life forever. Oh. 
Okay, this is where I tried to get PJ to join me up here and give you an illustration because I'm not good at that. I'm not good at that, but maybe he'll give you one later. Jesus says, didn't he, Lenny? Didn't Jesus say it? Jesus said, (laughs) okay, he said, is it not written? Yeah, okay, help me, help me, help me. I know it's Sunday morning. We don't, we don't need to treat it like a Wednesday night. But what did that just say? Who don't read that Bible? Oh, okay, I thought you were talking about y'all. <laughs> These are the people who take care of the law. But they have read everything. Except the law. Jesus says, that's number one. But Jesus says, is it not written? Watch this. Your toe's going to tingle when you get it. But I can't show you. Jesus said, is it not written in your law, which is a thousand years old? What's written in your law? I said it. Okay, y'all, okay, okay, okay. Jesus is saying, he's saying, I said it. So, so Psalms 82, there's one sentence that's in quotes which means somebody else said it, not Asaph. Asaph didn't say it. It's a quote. So in the quote, Jesus came to Asaph and spoke to him, and Asaph put it in the Psalms of David. The words of Jesus. So Jesus now says, I said it, that was me. I said that to Asaph. He's saying this word is a thousand years old. Come on, come on. But then he throws this in. Go to the next verse. This just messes me up every time. I know you're, you don't get it with me. I get it. But I got about five truths in my life. I don't need a million of them. I got about five truths in my life. This is one of them. Read the next four or five words. Hold up. (laughs) Jesus is messing with them in their heads. Jesus is saying, I said it a thousand years ago to Asaph. But God said it in the beginning in Genesis 1, 26. Gangster. It's spiritually thuggish. He said, he called them gods. And no matter what denomination you're in, the word, read it, cannot. I don't care what your bishop says. I don't care what your religion says. I don't care what church you come from. You're not gods. They don't want you to know who you are. Because if I can keep you ignorant, I can use my gift to manipulate you. But I'm going to be like TikTok right now. You can cancel me. You can take me down. You can try to put me under a government. But I'm going to free everybody I can from these religious laws that want to keep you. Because you cannot live under my revelation. You have to live under your own revelation. You got to understand God says, Jesus says, God over here in Genesis said, I'm going to make you in my image. I'm going to make you just like me. You're going to behave like me. You're going to do what I do. That's in Genesis 1. You're going to have dominion. Then showing up in the middle with Asaph, Jesus says it again. To Asaph, who put it in a song. 
Then over here at the end, when Jesus finally came in the flesh, Jesus said, now I'm here. I'm going to tell you myself from my own mouth. You are the children of the most high. So I'm going to quit right there. Religion is a problem. Religion might be your only problem. Because religion keeps you from knowing who you are. So this is how I end. If you believe this, if you believe this, react to it. I am who God says I am. I am. I am. I am. Everything changes today for some of you. For about 12 of you, everything changes today. When you wake up in the morning, the storm's going to be over. Everything's going to have fallen apart. I know they say you're going to get 12 feet of snow, but it's stopping right now. I mean, the rain that's been coming against you and the wind that's been coming against you, everything is just going to stop because you understand these things. And if you have the audacity, let me, oh God, okay, let me tell you something what happened to me. I was eight years old. My father would die the next year when I was nine. But I was so proud the day my daddy said, Josh, he said, I want you to go to McLean and Barnes. When you get there, when you get there, ask for a pound of eight penny nails. Any carpenters in the room? Eight penny nails. It's a type of nail that you use for finishing. He said, go there and get a pound of eight penny nails. And I said, okay, dad. And he said, oh, by the way, I'm getting on my little bike. And my dad said, oh, by the way, tell him you LJ's boy. Okay, y'all don't understand. When you get there now, because Martin, they don't know you. They know me. <laughs> when you get to the hardware store, we didn't have no Lowe's. We just had McLean and Barnes. When I got to McLean and Barnes, I said, I walked into McLean and Barnes, me and my little holes and my little, my, my little jeans and my shoes kind of wearing off in my, on my feet and a torn up t-shirt. I'll never forget that day. I walked in McLean and Barnes. I said, yeah, I need a pound of eight penny nails. I, 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 walk, I walked in there like T.D. Jakes, you know what I'm saying? I, I, you, know, you know, I need eight penny nails. I'm looking over the counter, and Mr. McLean looks at me, and he says, you need eight penny nails? Yes. Now, I got a classmate my same age. His name is Doug. Doug was also eight working at the cash register with his dad. And Doug said, yeah, hey, Martin, how you doing? I said, I'm good, but I don't want to deal with you now, Doug. I want to deal with your daddy. I need a pound of eight penny nails. I will never forget that day in my life. I was so proud. The man said, who are you? I said, I'm Jay's boy. And he looked at the man and he said, go get him a pound of eight penny nails. My daddy didn't have the money to pay for it, but he had the character that went in front of me. And some of you ought to say today, I am who he says I am. I can do what he says I can do. I can go where he says I can go. I can have, that not many of you, I get it. I can have what he says I can have. Do this like me. Say, I'm not backing up no more. I'm going after what's mine. Me and my father are one. Whoever he is, that's who I am. I'm tired of being depressed. I'm tired of being down. I'm tired of trying to figure this out. I am just like him. You ought to give him a praise right there. As I go to my seat, I need about 12 of you who know something's gonna happen between now and in the morning to run your happy tail up to the altar saying, I am who he says I am. Y'all gonna help me? Y'all gonna help me? Y'all gonna help me? I am who he says I am. I don't care what it looked like. I don't care what happened. I don't care what they said. I don't care about no mistakes. I am what he says I am. Listen to me. Now that you're here with the right people, give three people a high five and tell them you are who you said. You are who you said he is. You are, you are what he said you are. Come on. 
Come on. You are who he said you are. You are who he said you are. Come on. I can go where he tells me to go. I can do what he tells me to do. I can have what he said I can have. Now I want you to shout. Can you hear me? Shout, I have audacity. I'm crazy in my mind. I feel good about myself. I feel good about my own spirit. I feel good about my calling. Because whoever he is, I am. Come on, swag for just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Yatta da ba sa hare bo so. Hey, hey, hey. Listen. He said this. He said this, PJ. He's he said this. He said this. He said, "Uh, thank you. Give me give me some Hammond." He says He says, "Uh, help me finish it, Bible studiers." He said, "Let this mind He said, let, get a mic. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in, in other words, he's saying, think like Jesus. How did Jesus think? That though he was called himself God, Jesus called himself God. But there was no robbery from God by calling himself God. Read it for yourself. Jesus says, I'm not stealing anything from God by saying I am him. I'm not stealing, I'm not robbing him. Would your child walk down the street and say, he's not my father. You, they look just like you. They act like you. These are your children. So Jesus says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, that though he wasn't necessarily, he was equal to God, but he didn't call it robbery. So say it right now. I'm equal with him. Come on. I'm equal with him. I'm just like him. I think like him. I do like him. I got some problems in my life, but that don't make me different. I'm just like him. I got his power. I got his anointing. I got his glory. It's on my life. Now I want you to rejoice like you're going crazy. One, two, three. Come on. I don't know what's happening. Listen, listen, all I'm trying to say, you, you, you stand in here not doing anything. So I, I wanted you to do something. But if you're not gonna do anything. Oh, I got you. You got me? I definitely got you. Okay. I don't take Go ahead. Okay, so first of all, let me bring some context. Pastor Martin messaged me yesterday, said you got an illustration for today's sermon. I did. I said, no, I ain't got nothing. I just wanna be a part. But as you were talking today, I was reading a book to my son a couple of days ago. And the book was called The Little Engine That Could. You ever read that one? Anybody ever read it? Okay. There's a part in the book where the little engine gets to the same mountain that he's been trying to get to in the entire book. And he doesn't make it up the hill until he starts to talk to himself, who he already knows who he is. Now, I know this might be too elementary for some of y'all. 
But as I was sitting over here and Pastor Martin, you kept saying, I think I can. I know I can. I know I can. I think I can. I think I can. I know I can. And I, I know that many of you, you ain't going to do nothing with it because you don't have no mountains in your life. So I'm going to give you two seconds. If you got some real mountains in your life and you want to move in an act of faith, I need you to get some space. I see you. Then there was another song that Lil Wayne did. I know y'all don't like Lil Wayne because I know that you know, you know that I know. But Apostle Wayne said something in one of his songs, Mr. Upshaw, it made me feel a way. He said, I'm just stunting like my daddy. I'm just stunting like my daddy. I'm just stunting like my... So you need to start walking that thing out. Whenever somebody looks at you and says, who do you think you are? Stunting like my daddy. I'm just stunting like my daddy. I'm just like my daddy. You think you better than me? No, I'm just. Oh, y'all feeling it? Break it down one time. I, I see y'all. Yay. 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 Break it down. Some of y'all are fighting the move in, in your body. I see it. You. You're doing it on 1%. Now we're going to do it on 10%. One more time, say, I'm just. Break it down. I see sis in the back, 5%. She went from this to this. But there's somebody over here. Why? Because I'm not afraid to glorify my God because the man of God just said, if he says that I'm just like him, I don't make him less by say I'm like him. So get yourself some room. Get yourself some room because I'm going to ask them to play. And Dr. the man of God said, you should respond to this word if you actually believe it. You ready? Y'all know your left from your right? Throw up your left hand. Throw up your right hand. I'm just... I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. If he said it, I can be it. If he said it, I can be it. Cause I'm just stunting like my, I'm just stunting like my, I'm just stunting like my, I'm just stunting like my. If he said it, I can be it. If he said it, I can beat it. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. If he said it, I can beat. If he said it, I can beat. I'm just starting like my daddy. I'm just starting like my daddy. Shut it up. See, if he said it, I can beat. If he said it. It could be it. I'm just. This is the posture that you walk.